Welcome to Electro Online. Now we're going to take a closer look at the effect of special relativity and on the next video the special, not the special, but the general relativity and how that affects the time on the clocks and the satellites. So, we know that the orbital velocity of any object going around any other object can be calculated by taking the square root of g m over r where g is the uh, the gravitational constant, m is the mass of the object we're going around, and r is the radius of the orbit itself. So in the case of a GPS satellite going around the Earth, we have the gravitational constant, we have the mass of the Earth in kilograms, and then this is the height of the SVs above the average radius of the Earth. We have to add the radius of the Earth to that for the total radius to the center and mass of the Earth, and we get 3,874 meters per second, about 2.4 miles per second, or about 3.9 kilometers per second. That is the speed of these satellites. Now that's enough to affect the time on board of the satellite. So, how do we figure that out? Well, here's the time dilation equation, where we say that the time, as measured on Earth, is equal to time, as measured on the SVs, divided by the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared is also sometimes called gamma. So when we plug in the values, there's our 3874, and there's the speed of light, and we go ahead and calculate it, and of course when we take the square root of 1 minus a very tiny number, well that's difficult to do, and so therefore we use the approximation like this, and that's very close to the actual value. So then, we manipulate the equation, we know that the ratio of the time seen on, seen on the Earth divided by the time on the satellite is equal to 1 over 1 minus that. Notice that the time on the Earth takes longer than the time seen on the satellite because this, the denominator is actually less than 1, so the ratio should be slightly bigger than 1. So then we can manipulate it and we can then show that this time is therefore equal to the difference between the two times, the time on the Earth and the time on the satellite, divided by the time on the Earth. And so we can say it's this, the ratio of delta t over t. The difference in time over a given time is equal to this. Now, of course, we're going to let t equal one second. And therefore, we get delta t equals to this per second. Now, if we then calculate that there's 86,400 seconds in a day, we convert that to 7.2 microseconds per day, which means that the time on the satellites runs 7.2 microseconds every day behind the Earth time, so the SV time runs slower by amount of 7.2 microseconds per day. Now you may say, well, 7.2 microseconds, is that a lot? Well, since light travels 30 centimeters or one foot every nanosecond, that's 300 feet per microsecond, so that's 2,100 feet. Well, that is almost a half a mile, maybe 600 meters per day, that the time would cause the reading of the GPS to be off, simply due to the effect of special relativity. And again, the special relativity effect is the effect you get when you travel through space very quickly. 3,874 meters per second is quite fast, and therefore it does affect the time on board the satellites, and we have to adjust for that time difference for GPS to be accurate.